When we first considered updating the Segman interface, we started by asking, what could we do to really help our customers manage their site? We knew we wanted to provide every project with easy access to data, but without overwhelming the users. This led to discussions about what was the best way of displaying information for each room. We also wanted to ensure we implemented a flexible approach, one where the users would be able to arrange the information in ways that were important to them. While one person might want the current lighting power for all rooms on the first floor, another user might want an easy way to compare the energy use of all their conference rooms. We considered using floor plans, but they require so much custom work to create and keep current. We were looking for a way that every site with a segment manager could benefit from being able to see their building's information with no custom programming right out of the box. So rather than use floor plans to look at buildings, we came up with the idea of using tiles of information like you see here. And as anyone who's played with dominoes knows, there's a huge benefit to tiles because you can stack them and combine them however you want, and they're fun. Based on the info in the LMCS file, the segment creates tiles for each room and orders them based on their location. For this single story site, notice that it's been set up to display two tiles, one for each wing. This building has enhanced room controllers. These are the larger format units for dimming or can be available for plug load as well. And they have internal current transducers. So once we assign voltages to each room controller, we can read the power usage for each controller and therefore each room. We can also put the voltage and an estimated value for the current into any on-off room controllers that don't have current transducers to get an idea of what's happening with them. Notice that each one of these tiles has a slight drop shadow. This subtle hint tells us that this tile is actually showing us information based on other tiles. When I hover over a tile, I get a spark line, a quick little graph that shows what the power usage has been most recently for this area. Now, if we wanted to see the individual tiles that make up either one of these wings, all I have to do is click on the tile, and that tile expands, so now I can very quickly and easily scan all the different rooms that make up this wing. By hovering over a tile, I can use my mouse's wheel and move the tiles right or left. To help tell whether a room is occupied or not, we added this little icon to the tile. And as you would expect, the rooms that are unoccupied are off, based on the lower KW value we see in the lower part of the tile. Now here's something I find really interesting. Here's a couple of rooms, and notice the wattage of this room is less than the wattage of this room. So it must be more efficient, right? But that's not a fair comparison. One room might be a lot larger than the other, so of course it's going to use more power. So what do we do? What we've done is make it possible to enter the square footage of each room in LMCS or the Segman's config screen for that room's network bridge. This allows us to normalize each room's usage by dividing its power by its square footage, and that gives you the lighting power density. I find it amazing that all the energy codes are based on lighting power densities, but most owners have never seen the actual lighting power density for a space. Here it is displayed for every room. If there are a lot of rooms and I want to see them all, I can do that by clicking Zoom Out and I quickly reduce the size of all the room tiles to better see the color-coded tiles, like gray or red that I'm looking for, to see a problem tile. Now I can zoom back in. One other thing, if this was an iPad or other touchscreen device, I'd be able to touch the tiles and swing them back and forth to see all the rooms. Down below the tiles is a performance graph. This graph tells us what the performance has been for this area here. To get any close-up of any specific time range in the graph, I can adjust these two sliders here and here, and the graph will adjust to show the data for just this period of time. Now, if I want a quick and easy way of seeing rooms that are using more energy than they should, we have a drop-down option here called Filter. So instead of seeing all the tiles, we can just see the trouble spots in the area. If I want to go back to the top view, I click back up here, and I'm back to seeing all the information for all the Wattstopper Birmingham offices. To be able to see the rooms in a location view is pretty intuitive. You can imagine having a single tile for the entire building. When you click on that, you get to see three tiles for each of the floors. Click on a floor tile, it brings up wings. Click on a wing, and it could bring 10 to 20 offices up, right? Real easy. But somebody else might want to stack their tiles differently. They might say, I'd like one tile for all my open offices. 
and another for all my conference rooms, and another for all the individual offices. The fact is we don't know all the different ways people might want to be able to see information about the rooms in their building, so we wanted to make sure we had a very easy way of setting up custom tiles, and then be able to view these just and be able to view just these custom tiles. Custom tiles are collections of spaces combined in a way that are really useful to the user. Here I see a project management tile showing info for all its spaces. If I click on that tile, I see the rooms that make up that project management tile. If I want to go back, I click here, and then I can pick another tile if I want. Watch list may be a collection of offices that often use more power than most, so I want a tile that lets me go in and just check on those. Key to understanding tiles is that they can overlap. You can have the same tile in multiple groups if you want to. So the same room can be part of one for project management, one for a watch list, or one for all tiles on the first floor. One of the other impressive things is about how easy it is to set up a custom group. So I'll go back here to the top of the Wattstopper Birmingham office by using this breadcrumb trail. Then I'm going to select location view. I want to keep an eye on these four offices. I want to hover over each and then cl click on select for this office and this one and this one and finally this one. Now that I've selected these four offices, you'll notice they're in a selection list down here. Now I can add these to a group and create a new group name or if I want I can add them to an existing group by just using the other radio button. So for this group I might name it Charles's Rooms because I want to have that group as a its own custom group tile. If I go back into the custom view I get to see that that tile with those four rooms has now been created. Here it is. Note that when I hover over it I can't yet see any data because that tile's just been created but now the segment manager will start storing information about that room and we'll be able to show the information here for those four rooms all combined. Lastly, you might remember that I mentioned earlier that LMCS will have the ability to tag rooms. Those tags will be able to be used automatically to create helpful custom tiles if the LMCS file is imported into the segment. So if a specifier defines room types and we tag the rooms for them in LMCS, tiles for each type of those rooms will be created automatically. I know we're running a little bit long so I'll move quickly and show you that there's a manage button here. So you can see the information about the tiles that make up that room. As well as a manage tab which gives you a separate dialog where you can see and ch change the key parameters for this group globally. Those parameters being normal hours or after hours mode or switch lock, or do you want to send a scene out to all of them. Or if you go into the shared parameters tab, you can see and change those same parameters for the same group of, real, of rooms individually, as well as rename the room if you want to. You can also use a segment manager as a master scheduler for a system. We've completely changed the way that information is displayed when a room is scheduled. So by default, you see a day view and all groups scheduled on and off with on or normal hours after hours are now shown as a band. You can change the view to week or month using this drop down view. If you click on an existing event you can see its information. For this event at 8 a.m. the segment is telling the entire north wing to go to normal hours and at 5.30 p.m. is telling the north wing to go to after hours. If I want to edit that event I click on the edit pencil but note there's also a clone and a delete icon. From here I can change the time. I can change the rooms or I can have the events operating mode change to be normal hours after hours or send out a scene command or a level command to all the loads in this room. When I'm done I either hit the save button or the go away up here. We also have the ability to run a report on the dashboard side that can provide current information about power consumption. Sorry for the pun. I'll just pick start and stop dates, set for power and HTM output, and then hit generate report. You see a graph and you can also see that we've been storing the data for this particular area for every 15 minutes.
The next tab is really exciting. For those of us in California, there's now an energy code requirement that projects larger than 10,000 square feet must have a demand response capability. With the latest version of LMCS, somebody can go in and set individual Shed 2 level parameters for all dimming loads in the building. A Shed 2 level of 65% means that when I issue a demand response command, any load over 65 will reduce down to 65% level, but any load at or under 65 will be left alone. And now we've got a very easy way to generate that demand response signal. When I click this tab, I can choose if I want to send the demand response as a force condition, meaning it can't be overridden, which is the typical, or as an override condition, which is helpful for testing, since it means the people in the space can be able to override the demand shed if they want to. I can also actuate the demand response for the entire building, or I can do it just for an area if I've defined that as, as in an option in one of the configuration screens. Note the demand response tab has now turned red. So it's very clear that we're in the demand response mode. And it's going to stay that way until I come back and disable the DR signal. I know I mentioned it before, but the segment manager doesn't keep a lot of history data within it. So if someone wants to be able to retain that information for longer periods or manage a network with multiple individual segment managers, we can provide a full supervisor package. That's basically the Segman software loaded onto a full server PC with lots of hard drive space. This means you can pull up graphs to see information that go back months or years. The only limits then are based on the hard drive space in the supervisor. So with that, we here at Wattstopper appreciate the time you spent to get to the end of this presentation and we hope you've enjoyed your peek at the new interface. We're really excited about providing a simple, easy-to-use, customizable dashboard for all our customers. If you're one of our representatives, we'd love to work with you to get access to an online Segman Manager demo. That way you can work with it on your own and be well prepared to show it off to all your clients. For everybody else, we hope that you'll reach out to your Wattstopper salesperson or Wattstopper representative if you want more information about the incredible upgrade that we've just given our Segment Manager. This is Charles Kanufke. Wattstopper's VP of Systems. Thank you for your time today, and especially thank you to all the customers who have embraced the DLM platform and helped make it such a rousing success. I hope we'll be hearing from you soon.